Jesus, and to hear again the story of our salvation. And as we gather, we are reminded that for some, this night is heavy with loss and fear and violence. As our happy Christmas dawns, many across our world are shrouded in grief and sorrow. Ukraine, the Sudan, Palestine, Israel. In Bethlehem this year, the stores are shuttered and the lights unlit. There will be no festive Christmas celebration there this year. And across the world, we know that devastation does not align itself with one religious tradition. And so tonight, we carry the joy for our brothers and sisters and siblings of sorrow. We light our candles, praying our flames will bring hope to those who now are in darkness. And we bid come wonderful counselor, mighty God, everlasting Father, Prince of Peace. Blessed be God, Father, Son, and Holy Spirit. Blessed be God's kingdom, now and forever. Amen. Almighty God, to you all hearts are open, all desires known, and from you no secrets are hidden. Cleanse the thoughts of our hearts by the inspiration of your Holy Spirit, that we may perfectly love you and worthily magnify your holy name. Through Christ our Lord. Amen.
O oh God, you have caused this holy night to shine with the brightness of the true light. Grant that we who have known the mystery of that light on earth may also enjoy him perfectly in heaven, where with you and the Holy Spirit he lives and reigns, one God, in glory everlasting. Amen. Amen. is from the book of Isaiah. The people who walked in darkness have seen a great light. Those who lived in a land of deep darkness, on them light has shined. You have multiplied the nation. You have increased its joy. They rejoice before you as with joy as at the harvest, as people exult when dividing plunder. For the yoke of their burden and the bar across their shoulders the rod of their oppressor, you have broken as on the day of Midian. For all the boots of the tramping warriors and all the garments rolled in blood shall be burned as fuel for the fire. For a child has been born for us, a son given to us. Authority rests upon his shoulders, and he is named Wonderful Counselor, Mighty God, Everlasting Father. Prince of Peace. His authority shall grow continually, and there shall be endless peace for the throne of David and his kingdom. He will establish and uphold it with justice and with righteousness from this time onward and forevermore. The zeal of the Lord of hosts will do this. The word of the Lord. Thanks be to God. Thank you. 
The second reading is from the letter of Paul to Titus. For the grace of God has appeared, bringing salvation to all, training us to renounce impiety and worldly passions, and in the present age, to live lives that are self-controlled, upright, and godly. While we wait for the blessed hope and the manifestation of the glory of our great God and Savior, Jesus Christ. He it is who gave himself for us that he might redeem us from all iniquity and purify for himself a people of his own who are zealous for good deeds. The word of the Lord.
penetration and was taken while Quirinius was governor of Syria. All went to their own towns to be registered. Joseph also went to the town of Nazareth in Galilee to Judea to the city of David called Bethlehem because he was descended from the house and family of David. He went to be registered with Mary to whom he was engaged and who was expecting a child. While they were there, the time came for her to deliver her child, and she gave birth to her firstborn son and wrapped him in bands of cloth and laid him in a manger because there was no place for them in the inn. In that region there were shepherds living in the fields, keeping watch over their flock by night. Then an angel of the Lord stood before them, and the glory of the Lord shone around them, and they were terrified. But the angel said to them, Do not be afraid, for see, I am bringing you good news of great joy for all the people. To you is born this day in the city of David a Savior who is the Messiah, the Lord. This will be the sign for you. You will find a child wrapped in bands of cloth and lying in a manger. And suddenly there was with the angel a multitude of the heavenly host, praising God and saying, Glory to God in the highest heaven and on earth peace among those whom he favors. When the angels had left them and gone into heaven, the shepherds said to one another, Let us go now to Bethlehem and see this thing that hath taken place, which the Lord has made known to us. So they went with haste and found Mary and Joseph and the child laying in a manger. When they saw this, they made known what had been told them about this child. And all who heard it were amazed at what the shepherds told them. But Mary treasured all these words and pondered them in her heart. The shepherds returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had heard and seen, as it had been told to them. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Praise, Praise you, Lord, Lord Christ. I'm wondering, where do you get your news? Where do you get your news? Do you remember the old days of getting the newspaper delivered to your doorstep? As a child, I lived in a part of the country in Connecticut where the Hartford Current landed on our porch every morning around 6.30. The Hartford Current prided itself, and it still does, 
on being the nation's oldest continuously published paper, established in 1764 as a weekly by a New Haven publisher named Thomas Green. More than 200 years after Mr. Green began his enterprise, I can see my father sitting at the breakfast table like something out of a Norman Rockwell painting with the paper opened up in front of his face with one free hand groping for his toast or the cup of his, his uh, handle of his coffee cup. He was getting his news. Between the paper and the broadcast coming from the radio on the mantelpiece, that was our line of information of news as the new day dawned. Being kids, we sat on the other side of that outstretched newspaper and we ate our cereal fighting over who got to read the back of the box or dig for the prize buried beneath the frosted flakes. Now my great-grandfather, great he was a newsman in his own right. He was the editor of the Williamsport-based agricultural newspaper called Grit. Grit's now a monthly magazine and it's since moved its office to Topeka, but it started out in Williamsport in the 1880s as a weekly, an alternative to the Sunday paper. It had information about canning and food production, keeping livestock safe, healthy crop rotation, all that stuff. For folks who were toiling in the fields across Pennsylvania and America's heartland, this was important news. Well, today, Pew Research tells us that more than half of adults in our country turn most often to a digital device for their news. About a third of adults prefer TV news and radio and print come in last for preference at about 10% or less. So imagine, imagine getting your news from an angel. <laughs> that wasn't even listed as an option in the Pew Research. Now I don't think that anyone, even in Bible times, would have done anything other than cower if they were suddenly met by an angel of the Lord standing before them and sure enough, Luke tells us that the shepherds were terrified. They were terrified at the arrival of the angel and the proclamation of the good news. Fear not. Do not be afraid. I bring you good tidings of great joy. And then, as if to underscore the soul angel's message, a heavenly host surrounded them, shining and brilliant and singing hymns of praise, a multitude rejoicing in God's great news. The first angel gives details about what the shepherds will find, filling out the narrative of God taking on human flesh. The baby's location is given, and the angel even tells them how to recognize the Prince of Peace. He will be wrapped in swaddling clothes and lying in a manger. This is a full news report, not one of those teasers that says full story at 11. <laughs> this is the whole story, communicated with detail, with power, and with joy. And so the shepherds head out. They head straight for Bethlehem to see this thing that which had come to pass, which the Lord had made known unto us. The angel's reporting job is done, the good news is conveyed, directions given, mission accomplished. But here's something that I noticed this year. We often overlook that the shepherds, the shepherds were also heralds of the good news. In some great game of biblical telephone, once they saw Jesus for themselves, then they too shared the news. Now, Luke doesn't tell us much more. We need to use our imaginations. And we can imagine, maybe, that the shepherds, they're filled with curiosity at the news of the birth of their Messiah, that they hasten 
to visit the Holy Family. They approach the stable and its company, no doubt, with some reverence. Their sheep followed along, maybe pushing at the back of their knees, straining to get a look, or maybe, maybe just to get closer to that delicious hay in the manger. Time passed. Luke doesn't tell us how long they were there. There was some quiet conversation. Luke doesn't tell us what was said. Or perhaps, perhaps there was no talking at all. Just a gentle and a wondrous gazing. And then they left. The shepherds got up off their haunches, grabbed their shepherd's crooks, gave their lambs a nudge, and they returned, glorifying and praising God for all they had seen and heard. Now, messengers of glad tidings, carriers of God's story, I love that God chose the shepherds to first receive the news. In Luke's time, you see, shepherds were every man, laborers, ordinary folk, living close to the land. God didn't come to the elite, to those sitting on lofty thrones, or to the powerful. God's good news of the beginning of our salvation, the most daring and bold act of God coming to earth among us, it was shared first with the shepherds. Think of that amazing blessing and the responsibility of carrying that news to the world. I think that today, that it's our job to do the same thing. I don't think that the shepherds went right back to the hills to sit among their sheep or back to their campfire to stir sticks around in the hot coals, or back to their wineskins and jerky and rough corners of stale bread. No. I believe, you see, I believe that they were transformed by that holy encounter. I think they knew how amazing this baby was, and that the good news could not be contained, I think they went back telling everyone in their path about the amazing gift of God's Son up and down the street, knocking on doors in alleys and byways, all the way back out into the wilderness, sharing the truth, the truth of God's love for us. Now, we never hear about the shepherds again in Luke, they disappear. But God's message continues on. So they must have been very good evangelists. <laughs> Tonight, friends, we are the shepherds. We are the every man and the every woman, the every human doing our daily work, moving in the routine of our lives, walking in the same pathways, faithfully tending our sheep, our work, our families, our school assignments, watering our plants and folding our laundry until we too are given a heavenly encounter that compels us to speak. I don't know what brought you here tonight but it's a glorious night as we gather round. We come bundled up against the cold, a Christmas dinner in our bellies. Some of us are here with those whom we sit shoulder to shoulder with every Sunday. Some of us are here on an annual pilgrimage or as a friend of a friend or maybe because we just needed something to fill, as St. Augustine would call it, that God-shaped hole in us. Maybe we're here out of curiosity, or because we're anxious in this sorry world for something to make sense. And mystery and wonder is the only thing that will do. All of those scenarios are good because they've brought you here. And after the carols, and after the prayers, and after coming to God's table, which is long enough, wide enough, and big enough to satisfy all who hunger and thirst. 
Well, then we have an opportunity. We have an opportunity to share the good news of comfort and joy, of peace and hope, and of love that has no end. Share the good news of God's daring to come among us to redeem us. For it's in the telling of that story that the whole world will be changed. I promise. I've seen the love of God transform people one soul at a time. And I know that the power of God's love can make all things new. So tonight, wonder with me, how have your lives been changed by this good news? How have you been changed by meeting Jesus? Gather those thoughts up and then go and tell, rejoicing and praising God for all time. Amen. Would you please stand and join me as we proclaim the ancient faith of the church in the words of the Nicene Creed. We believe in one God. In peace, let us pray to the Lord. On this holy night, Christians across the world are celebrating Christ's birth. Open our hearts that Christ may be born in us. Loving God, hear our prayer. On this holy night, the angels sang peace to God's people on earth. Strengthen those who work for peace and justice in our nation and around the world. Loving God, Hear our prayer. On this holy night, shepherds in the field heard good tidings of joy. Give us grace to preach the good news of Christ. Loving God, hear our prayer. On this holy night, strangers found the holy family and saw the baby Jesus lying in the manger. Give us grace to greet strangers as members of your family. Loving God, hear our prayer. On this holy night, there was no room for your son in the inn. Give us grace to protect those who have no home and all who live in poverty. Loving God, hear our prayer. prayer. On this holy night, your Christ came as a light shining into the shadows. Bring comfort to all who suffer in the sadness of our world, especially those whom we name now either silently or aloud.
Loving God, hear our prayer. On this holy night, heaven has come down to earth, and earth is raised to heaven. Bring into the fullness of your presence all those who have died, especially those in whose loving memory the sanctuary is adorned. Holy God, hear our prayer. On this holy night, all who look to you in hope proclaim the glory of your name. Receive the glad praise we offer in companionship with Mary and Joseph, the shepherds, the angels, the saints, and all those with whom we worship this night. Loving God, hear our prayer. O God of heavenly glory and earthly peace, you have hallowed this sacred night with the joyful tidings of Christ's birth. May the light dawning upon us kindle our hearts and awaken hope that we may shine forth your glory in love. In Christ's name, amen. amen. Our dear friends, by the grace of the Incarnation, all of our sins are forgiven. The peace of the Lord be with you always. I encourage you to share the peace of Christ with one another. I'm so excited that so many of you are here tonight. This is awesome. So Merry Christmas to you all. I want to welcome our bishop, Bishop Scanlon, who's so gracious and shows up twice a year to be with us. God bless her. Um, and choir. Wow. Very nice. Thank you. And Jordan, nice job. So, um... Yes, do clap for Jordan. He's generally awesome. So friends, um, I know you're going to be brokenhearted, but we're not passing an, an alms plate or a basket tonight just because the, the risk of contagion feels so dangerous. However, we do have a plate in the back. So as you come up to communion or as you return from communion, we invite you to leave your gift there. Um, and the way that we do Holy Communion at St. Stephen's is this. You're welcome to come to Holy Communion. At the direction of the usher, the ushers will come up the center aisle and go backward. So the people in the front will come up first. You will come up the center aisle. If you're sitting in the outside, you are invited to go to the back of the church and come up the center aisle. We have communion rails here. You can stand or kneel. When you get up here, go as far to the outside as you can. Um, the communion ministers will come by. Put your hands out, you'll get Holy Communion. If you need gluten-free, please just tell us, and we're very happy to ensure that you receive gluten-free communion. And because you're really smart people, you're gonna pick up a personal chalice on your way across the, um, the communion rail, and then another communion minister will come by and pour some consecrated wine into your chalice. You don't have to, but you certainly may. And if you prefer not to receive communion, but you'd like a blessing, come forward and just put your arms across your chest like this and we're very happy to ensure that you get a blessing. The point of all this is that we want you to know that you are always welcome at the altar of God. Walk in love, friends, as Christ loved us and gave himself for us.
We give thanks to you, O oh God, for the goodness and love which you have made known to us in creation, in the calling of Israel to be your people, in your words spoken through the prophets, and above all, in the word made flesh, Jesus, your Son. For in these last days you sent him to be incarnate from the Virgin Mary, to be the Savior and Redeemer of the world. In him you have delivered us from evil and made us worthy to stand before you. In him you have brought us out of error into truth, out of sin into righteousness, out of death into life. On the night before he died for us, our Lord Jesus Christ took bread, and when he had given thanks to you, he broke it and gave it to his disciples and said, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. After supper, he took the cup of wine. And when he had given thanks, he gave it to them and said, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for all for the forgiveness of sins. Whenever you drink it, do this for the remembrance of me. Therefore, according to his command, O Father, we remember his death, we proclaim his resurrection, we await his coming in glory, and we offer our sacrifice of praise and thanksgiving to you, O Lord of all, presenting to you from your creation this bread and this wine. We pray you, gracious God, to send your Holy Spirit upon these gifts, that they may be the sacrament of the body of Christ and his blood of the new covenant. Unite us to your Son in his sacrifice, that we may be acceptable through him, being sanctified by the Holy Spirit. In the fullness of time, put all things in subjection under your Christ, and bring us to that heavenly country where with St. Stephen and all your saints we may enter the everlasting heritage of your sons and daughters. Through Jesus Christ, our Lord, the firstborn of all creation, the head of the church, and the author of our salvation. By him and with him and in him, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honor and glory is yours, almighty Father, now and forever. Christ, our Passover, is sacrificed for us. Therefore, Therefore let us keep the peace. Hallelujah.
These are the gifts of God for you, the people of God. Holy gifts for holy people.
The prayer after communion is found within your bulletin. I invite you to stand or to kneel as you are able. Let us pray. O oh, great God, as you came in the stillness of Bethlehem, enter into our lives. Overcome earthly shadows with the light of Christ's presence so that we may clearly see the way to walk, the truth to speak, and the life to live for him. Give us, O oh God, such love and wonder that with shepherds and angels and pilgrims unknown, we may come to adore the Holy Child, the promised King, and with our gifts worship him, our Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. Our ushers will be lighting your candles, and in a moment we will begin to sing Silent Night.
Christmas blessing has four petitions. Each of them ends with a hearty amen. May Almighty God, who sent his Son to take our nature upon him, bless you in this holy season, scatter the darkness of sin, and brighten your heart with the light of his holiness. Amen. May God, who sent his angels to proclaim the glad news of the Savior's birth, fill you with joy and make you heralds of the gospel. Amen. May God, who in the word made flesh, join heaven to earth and earth to heaven, give you his peace and favor. Amen. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you now and remain with you always. Amen. Amen.